It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, which means it's the least wonderful time of the year. Tis the season to be cold, lonely, and miserable. All I want for Christmas is for the season to be over. Christmas used to be a time for celebrating the birth of some Middle Eastern kid. Now it's a time to celebrate commercialism by giving your kid the new iPhone made by Chinese kids with parts mined from African kids. Congrats, you just paid $1,300 for a USB port. But there's something worse than the bone-chilling cold of winter. Worse than all the rampant commercialism of Christmas. Something even worse than getting trampled to death by a rampaging crowd of overweight soccer moms at Walmart willing to sacrifice a few lives to save a few bucks. I'm talking, of course, about Christmas music. Christmas music is another way of saying music I don't want to hear 11 months out of the year. But since it's December and everyone from Santa to Satan is blasting this shit, let's take a look at some of the worst Christmas songs of all time. Number one, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Is it though? Is it really the most wonderful time of the year? Maybe in the Southern Hemisphere where the summer's about to start, but I can tell you 100% without a doubt here in Boston, this is not the most wonderful time of the year. It's fucking freezing outside. It gets dark at like 4 p.m. And once it starts snowing, our already famously bad drivers manage to get even worse. The cold, miserable weather makes everyone even angrier and ruder than usual. We often get called mass holes by people from out of state. And that's in the summertime. There isn't even a word for what we're like in the winter. It's so bad. It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year was written in 1963 by two people nobody's ever heard of and first performed by Andy Williams. Since then, several people have covered the song, including Harry Connick Jr., Garth Brooks, and Johnny Mathis. None of them well. But what makes this song even worse than the others on the list is the fact that Staples has been using it in their back-to-school advertising campaign since 1995. So, instead of just having to hear this song played a few times every December, we've had to hear a few lines from the song played a few dozen times a day for a few months straight for the past few decades. It's the least wonderful ad campaign ever. Just like this might be the least wonderful song on the list. Number two, all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. Any kid who asks Santa for their two front teeth is an idiot. You just totally wasted an entire Christmas wish, kid. Those things will just grow in on their own if you wait long enough. Jesus, have a little patience. Now, if you're an adult who just wants their two front teeth for Christmas, I'd forget about asking Santa and go ask a dentist instead. Even if Mr. Claus had gone to dental school and was Dr. Claus, he still wouldn't have time to be performing surgeries on Christmas. So go see a dentist. But unlike Santa, they don't work for free. So maybe instead of asking Santa for teeth, Ask him for a shitload of money because dental work is absurdly expensive. And maybe also ask him to give you a lift to Mexico in his sled where dental work costs a fraction of the price that it does here in the U.S. All I Want for Christmas is My Two Front Teeth was written by a public school teacher named Donald Gardner in 1944. After having to constantly deal with lispy, gapped-toothed second graders, Gardner presumably wrote the song because all he wanted for Christmas was a classroom full of kids with normal teeth so he could understand what the hell they were saying and not get spit on every time one of them came up to him to talk. This song first became a hit in 1948 by The Satisfiers and was later recorded by George Strait, Nat King Cole, The Platters, and plenty of other hypocrites who had both their front teeth. Number three, let it snow. Yeah, how about no? Fuck snow. I hate shoveling it, I hate driving in it, and after watching the first eighth of an inch or so of snowfall every year, I hate looking at it. You know who likes snow? People who don't get snow. If I lived in, say, Los Angeles, where the average annual snowfall is zero inches, I might actually like snow since I wouldn't have to deal with it. But here in Boston, where we average 50 inches of snow a year and sometimes get more than 100, there's nothing to like about your car sliding down the street sideways into a telephone pole, or if you survive that crash, later slipping down a flight of stairs and shattering your hip. Unsurprisingly, Let It Snow was written in Hollywood during a heat wave. It was written in 1945 by Sammy Kahn and Jules Stein. Frank Sinatra recorded it in 1948, and later Dean Martin in 1959. And what do you know, both versions were also recorded in Hollywood, where snow never falls from the sky, but it's always flowing up somebody's nose. I'll say it again. Fuck snow. All of it. The drug, the artist, and especially that cold white shit I gotta shovel every winter. Number four. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. I'd be thrilled too if I saw my mom kissing a guy with shitloads of toys who could magically fly around the world but I doubt your dad would be laughing like you think if he happened to walk in on them. Fortunately, that deadbeat has passed out upstairs after wasting the money he was supposed to spend on Christmas toys for you on Pap's Blue Ribbon and lap dances for himself. So Mommy has all night to spend with Santa, kissing him, tickling him, whatever. You should have seen what they were doing a few minutes before you came downstairs. Your mom might not have heard you creep down, but Santa knows when you've been sleeping and when you're awake. And as soon as you go back to sleep, 
Rocky and your mom are going for round two. I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus was written by Tommy Connor and first recorded by Jimmy Boyd in 1952 at the age of 13. Now, if little Jimmy had been seven or eight, maybe I'd believe that he didn't know the truths about Santa. But there's no way a 13-year-old is dumb enough to still believe in him, which means Jimmy knew damn well that his ho-ho-ho of a mom was fucking around with some weird cosplaying stranger in the middle of the night. Still, no matter how big of a loser the white-bearded stranger spreading late-night holiday cheer to your mom might be, he's got to be a step up from your dad. Who knows, maybe next year he'll actually be your stepdad and bring you a few new PS5 games instead of just randomly selling the ones you've got for beer money like your current dad does. Number 5. Santa Baby This song captures the modern Christmas spirit better than any other that I can think of. The lyrics to this song can basically be summed up to mean, Hey Santa, I've maintained a basic level of human decency all year for no reason other than so that you'll buy me all kinds of expensive shit. So if you give me this, 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 and this now, I'll be good again next year so you can buy me even more expensive shit. If there's ever been a gold digger's anthem, Santa Baby's gotta be it. I mean, this is some next level gold digging. The woman in the song is basically trying to seduce a convertible, a yacht, expensive furs, and even a ring out of jolly old Saint Nick. And she doesn't seem to care at all that he's a married man. Although this wouldn't be the first time he's fucked around on Mrs. Claus. In fact, little Jimmy was just telling me that he saw his mom kissing Santa Claus the other night. Santa Baby was first performed in 1953 by Eartha Kitt. Since then, it's been covered by dozens of artists, including Madonna, Taylor Swift, Gwen Stefani, and Ariana Grande. But despite all of them trying to make Santa their baby daddy, none of them have yet been able to become the baby mama of Santa's baby. Number six, White Christmas. I always assumed this song was either about cocaine or just some good old-fashioned yuletide racism, because you'd have to be a real asshole to wish a snowy Christmas on anyone. You know how many more car accidents there are when it's snowing? You're saying you want people to die so the tops of your trees can look pretty? Get the fuck out of here. White Christmas was written in 1942 by Irving Berlin and first performed by Bing Crosby in the musical Holiday Inn. Both men might have been dreaming of a white Christmas, but they got a green one because White Christmas went on to become the best-selling single of all time, selling more than 50 million copies worldwide. Unfortunately, Bing Crosby isn't the only one to record this terrible Christmas song. White Christmas has also been covered by lots of other white people like Frank Sinatra, Bette Midler, Michael Bolton, Garth Brooks, and Andy Williams. If they get their wish and it does snow on Christmas, hopefully it'll snow enough to cover our ears so we won't have to hear this awful song. Number seven, Blue Christmas. White Christmas, Blue Christmas, whatever color Christmas, I'm not interested. While the idea of blue snow falling from the sky is kind of cool, that's not what this song's about. Blue Christmas is about some whiny dude pining over a girl he lost. She probably left him because she was sick of hearing him singing depressing songs like this one. It's basically a country song disguised as Christmas music. Both genres are depressing enough on their own. Put them together and you end up with songs like Blue Christmas that will make you lose your girlfriend and leave you alone on Christmas with nothing but blue balls. Blue Christmas was written by two people you've never heard of and first recorded by someone else you've never heard of in 1948. But in 1957, some dude that I've never heard of named Elvis Presley famously recorded Blue Christmas and released it on his Christmas album, which also includes a cover of White Christmas. Both are terrible, but at least Blue Christmas matches his eyes and his suede shoes. It also matches about 10 other Elvis songs with Blue in the title. Fortunately, since it's rarely played outside of December, we only have to hear Blue Christmas once in a blue moon. Number 8. Frosty the Snowman when I try to build a living, breathing creature in my garage made from old auto parts and other inanimate objects, everyone in town freaks out and calls me a weirdo. But when a group of kids down the street successfully create a living creature outside in the snow, no one bats an eye. Like, seriously? Your kid just gave life to an eight-foot-tall dude who doesn't wear pants but does smoke and you're not even a little concerned? Frosty the Snowman was written by Jack Rollins and Steve Nelson in 1950. Gene Autry, whose recording of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer hit number one on the U.S. charts a year earlier in 1949, was the first to record Frosty the Snowman. But his song about the friendly Frosty Golem only made it to number seven on the U.S. charts. Perhaps this made Autry salty about Frosty. Somehow I doubt it, though, because between the two songs, Gene Autry raked in piles of royalty checks, more than enough to build several snowmen out of cash. Autry died in 1998. I didn't give a shit then, and I still don't now. But I'll admit, I still get a little teary-eyed at the end of Frosty the Snowman when he melts. Granted, some of them are tears of joy in anticipation of the end of another bad Christmas song. But I can't help but feel a little sadness, a little sense of loss when Frosty melts. Because when he does, his corncob pipe lands in the pool of water and gets ruined. It had a fresh bowl that Frosty had just packed, too. So sad. Number 9. The Twelve Days of Christmas 
If we only had to listen to Christmas music for the 12 days following or leading up to the actual holiday, it wouldn't be so bad. But they start blasting this crap like 12 weeks out now. When I was a kid, they at least had the decency to wait till after Thanksgiving. But in recent years, I've been hearing this miserable music not just before Thanksgiving, but even before Halloween. Ain't no one trying to hear any holiday music in October unless it has Monster or M.A.S.H. in the title. Granted, Christmas music is much creepier than Halloween music. But still, The Twelve Days of Christmas isn't so much creepy as it's just plain bad. It was written in 18th century England and is what's called a cumulative song. That's a type of song that gets worse and worse as it drags on, accumulating shittiness along the way. In other words, instead of each verse being actually unique, They just pile a little more shit onto the previous verse and pretend it's unique. Ultimately, what we end up with here is a never-ending song that no one can ever remember the words to. Speaking of, have you listened to the lyrics of the 12 Days of Christmas? Who the hell would want any of that shit? What am I supposed to do with two turtle doves? And I know you didn't just send 12 snare drummers to my house. Give me the five gold rings and the nine dancing ladies. You can keep the rest of that shit. Number 10. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. No. Go fuck yourself. Next, number 11, Jingle Bell Rock. Don't let the name fool you. This jingle most certainly does not rock. Like most songs with rock in the title, Jingle Bell Rock fails to deliver what it promises. Now, if it was called Jingle Bell Suck, there'd be no false advertising. But Jingle Bell Rock takes a Christmas song that just plain sucks, one I'll get to in a minute, and turns it into a song that still sucks, but also kind of swings. Jingle Bell Rock was first recorded in 1957 by Bobby Helms. He also claimed to have written the song, but so did three other people. To this day, it's still debated who actually wrote Jingle Bell Rock. What isn't debated is how much the song sucks. Half the lyrics don't even make sense. What a bright time to rock the night away? What are you talking about bright? It's pitch black by like four o'clock. And where the hell is Jingle Bell Square? I want to dance and prance with the rest of y'all, but whenever I put Jingle Bell Square into Google Maps, it just sends me driving back and forth between Harvard and Kenmore Square. Both this song and the one it's extended from can suck my jingle balls. Number 12, Jingle Bells. When someone says Christmas song, Jingle Bells is often the first to come to mind, which is funny because it has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas and everything to do with joyriding through the snow and picking up chicks in a one-horse open sleigh. In fact, Jingle Bells was originally titled The One Horse Open Sleigh. It was written by James Lord Pierpont in the 1850s, not as a Christmas song, but possibly a Thanksgiving song, or more likely as a drinking song since it was written in a tavern during a time when beer was safer to drink than water. But no matter what you call it or why it was written, Jingle Bells is one of the most recognizable songs in the world. It's also one of the most boring. Like, I guess I get why a song about going a whopping 22 miles per hour in a sled might have been popular 170 years ago. That was pretty hardcore back then. But why the hell do people still sing this song today? We got Lambos and Teslas now. I want to hear songs about going 220 miles per hour in a no-horse opened up Huracan. That thing's got like 800 horsepower. You know how much horsepower a one-horse open sleigh has? Neither do I, but it can't be much. Even though nobody outside of the Eskimo community has been able to relate to the lyrics of Jingle Bells for like a hundred years, and even though the song has absolutely nothing at all to do with Christmas, every December people all over the world are singing this dreadful tune. For Christmas this year, I think I'll only ask Santa for one thing. To make this and all the other god-awful songs on the list disappear. But I gotta find Santa first. I tried calling, but Mrs. Claus said he didn't come home last night. I bet if I walk down the street, I'll see his sleigh still on the roof of little Jimmy's house. Santa, that fucking guy. How do you feel about Christmas music? Are you a miserable Grinch who hates it all like me? Or are you one of those assholes who somehow managed to find happiness during the holidays and actually enjoy Christmas music? Tell me in the comments. But if it's the latter, don't even think about trying to spread your holiday cheer to me by singing any Christmas songs. That shit's so played out that even Christ himself is sick of it. And it's his birthday. I say we throw away all Christmas music and just sing happy birthday instead. Or just throw away Christmas altogether. Whichever. You're so annoying. Annoying. If you'd like to hear some of my music that has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas, click the link in the description or search for this dude on Spotify, YouTube, or wherever else you go to listen to music that has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas.